Paul has just passed his driving test. His friend who accompanied him to the test centre says he will not be returning with him as he is going on elsewhere. And Paul is now free to drive on his own anyway. Paul decides to go straight home as he is anxious to tell his family the good news. He could go home by the normal road or take the motorway, which would be quicker. He has never driven on a motorway before, of course, but he thinks uh, there's nothing to driving on the motorway. So you've decided to use the motorway, Paul. Well, take care. Watch it now. You're going too fast for a motorway slip road, and you are also in the wrong lane. You probably missed all the signs, too. No, Paul, you don't shoot across three lanes like that. Now, let's see how you get on. Had enough, Paul. You didn't get it right, did you? So, you passed your test, Paul? Yes, but I wouldn't have passed if the motorway was included. I came back that way and it was awful. Well, it isn't really. If you follow the rules, there's nothing safer than a motorway. I'm just off to Leeds. Why not come with me? I'll explain it to you. That's a good idea. I'll just tell the family where I'm going. Before going on any motorway journey, don't forget those checks. Oil, water, tyres, lights and battery. It is vital that your car is in first-class condition and capable of withstanding the stresses that motorway driving can impose on it. Make sure your windscreen and lamps are clean and unobscured. It is important to plan and check your route carefully and to know the numbers of the interchanges where you go on to and come off the motorway. Most road maps now show these interchange numbers and they help you to know when to leave the motorway at the correct place. Don't forget those seat belts and make sure the doors are properly closed. Check your indicators and be certain that you have enough petrol for the journey. It can be a costly and possibly dangerous situation to run out of petrol on the motorway. Motorways are special roads designed to carry traffic only. They are the safest roads because all the traffic is moving in one direction. There are no right turns and U-turns are prohibited. You may stop only in an emergency and then on the hard shoulder on your left. Now, now Paul, you must remain in the acceleration lane until there is a safe gap in the traffic. Check not only your mirror, but by glancing over your shoulder. Signal in plenty of time and move out into the first lane. But what if there's no guard? Reduce speed and wait, and if necessary, stop until there is a safe gap. When you get onto the motorway, stay in the first lane and keep your speed down. Certainly, until you get used to the different conditions and speed of traffic, keep a safe distance behind the vehicle in front of you. As you go faster, increase this distance, and even more so when it is wet and icy. If someone comes in front of you, drop back and regain your safe distance. Now we have to move into the second lane because of roadworks. But before making any move, always check your mirror first to make sure it is safe to do so. Many of the signs on the motorway are different from those on ordinary roads, particularly roadworks. This sign is telling us which lane to take. We make another mirror check, keep our speed down, and be prepared to move into the third lane. This sign means the road narrows, and notice the M6 sign, by the way, just to remind you which motorway you're on. Now, that warns of high winds, which can be very dangerous if you're near or behind high vehicles. And now we see the maximum speed is 30 miles an hour again telling us which lane we have to use in case we are not already in it. 
Uh, that tells us we shall be crossing the central reservation and facing oncoming traffic again. We must keep to the speed advised and take extra care, as the traffic approaching may be moving faster than ordinary roads. Uh, soon we shall see the sign telling us to move back onto the correct carriageway. We could then find traffic merging from the left, so we will have to make allowances for this and make normal progress as soon as possible. Well, that all seems fairly simple. Yes, if you observe the signs and speeds, you shouldn't have any problems at any of these hazards. What do those signs mean? Uh, they're warning signs, too. When the lights on these signs are flashing, they warn of hazards ahead. The numbers advise you of the temporary maximum speed at which you should be travelling, indicating when one or two lanes are close to traffic, and showing that the present hazard is now past. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the road ahead is clear. On the motorway, always be alert to traffic behind you as well as in front. We are coming up to our first interchange now, and we want the M62. So we must watch the overhead signs carefully, or we could be in the wrong lane and miss our route. But that sign says the M62 goes both ways. How do we know which way to go? We want Manchester and Leeds, so we follow that arrow. I am reducing speed now, as we shall be approaching a sharp bend. There's another sign telling us which lane to take for our particular route. What happens if we take the wrong lane? We'd have to leave the motorway at the next exit and rejoin it again and get back to our normal route. It can be very dangerous to take these bends too fast. Remember, you're not only negotiating a bend, but you have to merge with traffic from the other motorway. Apart from moving traffic, you may even see vehicles parked on these bends, and this can be particularly dangerous, not least for the driver of the parked vehicle, who may be in great danger when entering or leaving his vehicle. So keep your speed down and approach with caution. Well, that's our first interchange negotiated safely. It looks as though he's in trouble. Have you ever broken down on the motorway? Yes, as a matter of fact, I had a little trouble a while ago. If you do break down, pull onto the hard shoulder. The numbered posts are important to the people who may have to find and help you. So memorize the number on the post nearest to you. If your vehicle is fitted with hazard warning lights, switch them on and try to leave your vehicle on the passenger side as this is safer. Make your way to the nearest motorway phone, keeping as far away from moving traffic as possible. The telephone will connect you with the nearest police headquarters motorway control room. The telephone will be answered by an operator in the control room and you will be asked for the number of the marker post nearest the box. Give this and any other details you're asked for. The operator is there to help you and get you on your way as quickly as possible. Is your vehicle outside the box? What's your name, please? Mr. J. Smith. From the information you give, they will know exactly where you are and, if needed, will be able to send assistance to you. If you go back to your vehicle, I'll send the RAC out to you. Bye-bye. This driver had very little trouble and was soon ready to be on his way again. But remember to take the same care when rejoining the carriageway as you did when you joined the motorway. Match your speed to that of traffic in the first lane and do not move into the lane until it is safe to do so. We'll shortly be merging with another motorway, so we'll have to watch the signs and keep in the correct lane. This is the advantage, Paul, of carefully checking your route before setting out and knowing all the numbers and interchanges you'll need on your journey. Here's another bend and a sign telling us the maximum speed is 40. So check your speed and adjust if necessary. And that's an indication of a road merging from the right. And so we've got to allow for traffic coming from that direction. Another mirror and shoulder check before merging with other traffic. Now a road is joining us from the left. 
and we have to allow for traffic coming from that direction. See these arrows on the road, Paul? They tell us we are in the first lane, and if we follow them through, we will still be in the first lane after the junction. We are coming up to another junction, so mirror and shoulder check again before moving out of lane. It's a fairly complicated one with leaving and merging traffic. We need to watch the signs and road markings carefully. We still want the M62 for Leeds, and as the traffic may be very heavy, we must keep our speed down and a safe distance between us and other vehicles. That van is changing course, but we want to go straight ahead, don't we? That's right. We must keep a safe distance from that truck, though, so I'll keep our speed down. It's not always easy to keep your distance in heavy traffic, but that may be the very time you'll need a safe gap. If someone ahead of you breaks suddenly, we could all be in trouble if we're too close. You should always drive well within the stopping distance for your speed, and remember to increase this distance when it's wet and foggy. He's cutting in a bit sharp, isn't he? Yes, he's left it a bit late for his exit, and he's forced to cut in. We'll have to reduce speed to give us that safe gap again. Now we're on an uphill gradient, and this means the slow-moving traffic could even be slower. So we'll overtake it in the second lane. That truck looks as though he's going to try and overtake the one in front. Ah, there he goes. Mirror and shoulder check, and we'll move into the third lane to overtake him. Don't forget to signal and move out only when it's safe. We must only remain in the third lane for as long as it takes to overtake slow-moving traffic. We must return to the second lane, and when clear, to the first lane. Remembering not to cut in sharply like that driver did to us. Before moving out of or into any lane, always make a mirror and shoulder check, and only move if it's safe to do so. Normally, you should always use the first lane. On any motorway, the second and third lanes are for overtaking only. I should drop back to get my safe gap again, but I can't because there's a heavy vehicle right behind me. Can't we go faster to get out of his way? No. Never let anyone push you into going faster than you want to. In any case, we shall be at the services soon and leaving the motorway. So if we speed up or go into the third lane, we may miss our exit. And he, of course, isn't allowed in the third lane. So we'll keep our speed and move into the first lane as soon as possible to allow him through. Now you can see the importance of the safe gap. This is a very dangerous situation, because he could not possibly stop if we had to break suddenly. And there's the services coming up. We'll stay in the first lane and start reducing speed. The countdown mark is telling us how far we are from the exit. 300, 200 and 100 metres. Mirror and shoulder check and signal in good time in case other vehicles are coming in too fast. And when you enter the services, remember, you can expect vehicles to be approaching from all directions. Motorway driving places you under greater stress than driving on a normal road. The solution's simple. When you feel tired, take a break. No one should drive on the motorway for more than an hour and a half. And sometimes even this is too long. And I must say I'm ready for a break now. Yes, so am I. And I haven't even been driving. Well, did that run help you at all? I'm just beginning to realise how much there is to motorway driving. But what about leaving the motorway? Is that difficult? When leaving the motorway, look for the direction signs about a mile from the junction, and you'll see your exit junction number in the corner of the sign. Look for the countdown markers telling you how far away from the exit road you are. Get into the first lane in plenty of time, and reduce your speed. Signal in good time as you enter the slip road, and check your speedometer so that you can adjust your speed to that of normal roads before you enter them. What about driving the rest of the way, Paul? I took you for a few driving lessons, so you know this car as well as your own, and I'll be with you. Yes, I'd like to. I see now that I was silly to make the first run by myself instead of with an experienced driver. Motorways carry a lot of traffic, often at high speeds, but they are the best roads in the country. Follow the simple rules. Keep your speed well within your own and your car's capabilities. And always keep a good safe distance from vehicles in front of you. Then you will find that the motorway is the safe way.